Hello there guys, welcome back to another epic and extra maths video. In this video we're looking at proving the power rule for differentiation. We've already done that in a previous video, but this time we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to use the binomial expansion. I think that's quite cool. So just to clarify, when I say we're going to use the power rule, what I mean is if we have some y equals x to the n, we already know, or we should do, that the derivative of x to the n or the derivative of y with respect to x, is just n multiplied by x to the n minus 1. So in other words, if you had something like, I don't know, x cubed, we know that this would differentiate to 3x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2, so 3x squared. That's the power rule. But why does that actually happen? Well, as I say, I've already got a video on this, which I'll leave in the description, which proves this for any number, because n can actually be any number, and this will work. Um, the proof that we're going to do today, though, only works for when n is a natural number, i.e. n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc., going on forever. So it's only, it's only going to prove it for natural numbers, but I think it's an interesting proof nonetheless. If you want a proof for all real numbers, the link is in the description. But let's get straight into it. So first thing, let's just recall what the formula is for two things. First of all, the derivative of a function. The derivative f prime of some f of x is just the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's the definition of the derivative of a function. That's literally what it is. We also know that a plus b to the power of n using the binomial expansion is a to the n plus n choose 1 a to the n minus 1, b to the 1, plus n choose 2, a to the n minus 2, b squared. And this goes all the way on until we finally get to just b to the power of n. This is the binomial expansion. If you've not seen either of these before, it might be worth checking out some of my other videos on them. Uh, but these are the two things that we need to know. So if you're already happy with all of that, then let's just crack on, get straight into it. So if we define our f of x, to just be x to the power of n and we need to clarify for this to work n must be an element of the natural numbers i.e n is a counting number it's one two three four five six seven etc it doesn't work this this proof doesn't work for fractions negative numbers irrational numbers etc the actual power rule does work for all of those values however the proof here requires requires n to be a natural number. As I say, link in the description to the more general real number version. Well, we can say that the derivative of f of x is simply going to be the limit, because we don't know that it's nx to the n minus 1. We're going to assume that we don't know that. We're trying to prove it. It's just the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h. Well, in this case, because f of x is x to the n, it's x plus h to the n minus f of x, which is just x to the n, and it's over h, and it's the limit as h is going to be 0. Okay, but h can't actually be 0, of course, because if it was, then we'd be dividing by 0. So we can't just evaluate this. We have to expand it out, rearrange, etc. So this is where the binomial expansion comes in. If we take the limit as h goes to 0, and we take our x plus h to the n, and we just use the binomial expansion, which I wrote above, it's just going to be x to the n is the first term. We don't know what n is, so we can't use Pascal's triangle or something like that. We need to use the choose notation. n choose 1. Wonder what that is. We'll figure it out in a second. Times x to the n minus 1 times h. Next term is going to be n choose 2. x to the n minus 2 h squared. And this is going to keep going on because we don't know what h is. We don't know how many terms are going to be here. So I'm going to do a little dot, 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 because I have no idea how many terms are going to be. It depends on what n is, of course. And I'm going to end up with the last few terms, which is going to be n choose n minus 1 times x times h to the power of n minus 1. That's the second to last term. And then the final last term is just going to be n choose n. That's just the number 1. x to the 0, that's also the number 1 times h to the power of n. That is x plus h to the n all expanded out there. So zoom out so you can see it. And I've got dot 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 there because there could be any number of terms in between. We also need to take away our x to the n. So I'm going to do that. Take away x to the n. That's not part of the binomial expansion. And then we're going to do a massive divide. 
and we need to divide all of this by h still. Okay, so it looks a little bit crazy right now, but it's really not too bad. So this is equal to the limit. You'll notice a lot of things will cancel out as h goes to zero. First of all, the x to the n and the x to the n are going to cancel out. So x to the n minus x to the n, they're gone. Lovely, that's nice. Okay, right. Now let's try and simplify the top a little bit. Any number choose one is just the number. So n choose one is n. So this is n multiplied by x to the n minus one times h plus, and then, right, okay. Here's the thing. We could try to come up with an expression for the rest of this, but notice how every single term going forward has got at least two h's multiplied together. It's a h squared or higher, which means when we divide by h in a second, you might notice that actually there's still going to be a h, and when we go to zero, everything's going to times make zero, and it actually doesn't really matter what we do. So all I'm going to do is just rewrite some of these terms, and I'm not going to bother to work out what they are, because you'll see in a second that they actually all just go to zero anyway, and they become rather irrelevant. So I'm just going to rewrite the exact same stuff just so we can have that nice and consistent. n choose n, we can we could simplify that because n choose n is also just the number one always times h to the n. Lovely. But it doesn't actually matter because when we divide this by h, I'm actually going to do the division now. We can do the division because everything here is divisible by h on the numerator of this fraction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to stop writing over h and I'm literally just going to take out one power of h from every single point here. So I've got limits h goes to zero of n x to the n minus one. h divided by h is just one, so that gets ignored. Plus n choose two, x to the n minus two. It was h squared, now it's just h to the one. Plus a bunch of other terms that also have multiple powers of h in them. Plus n choose n minus one, x to the h, to, uh, x multiplied, sorry, by h to the power of n now minus two because we've lost a power of h plus h to the n minus one but you'll see it kind of doesn't really matter because as h goes to zero what happens well as h goes to zero this whole term becomes zero all of the terms that are inside here become zero because they all have h's in them this term becomes zero because it's got h in it this term becomes zero because it's got h in it and actually if we actually take the limit at this point we just get left with x times n sorry, n times x to the n minus 1, which is what we were trying to prove. Now, the reason this only works for natural numbers is because if x, uh, sorry, if n was not a natural number to begin with, we couldn't have used the binomial expansion. It only works for natural numbers. That's why this only works for natural numbers. x plus h to the n is only all of this stuff if n is a natural number. So that's what the proof is based on. But you can prove this for natural numbers using the binomial expansion as I have just done. So that shows you then that that means that the derivative is n x in minus one, which in other words, it means if y is x to the n, dy dx we've just proven using the definition of the derivative is n x to n minus one. So it's also good practice with using the definition of the derivative to solve problems. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.